thank you, Dr. Parvizi, and um, yeah, thank you for the opportunity to present. Um, so like you mentioned, um, I'm just going to give a very brief sampling of uh, some of the applications of NGS in, in non-orthopedic fields, um, specifically specific to uh, diagnosing infection and identifying pathogens um, in other fields. So, yeah, so first, um, just like to go into uh, urology and the urinary tract infection, um, which has been one of the more exciting areas where NGS has really shown some benefit. Um, UTI, of course, a very, uh, very important problem, um, high, in, high incidence uh, in the lifetime for, especially for adult women and a very high recurrence rate as well as uh, significant costs to the healthcare system. Um, somewhat analogous to, to the joint uh, in, in the PJI, um, the old dogma is that uh, the bladder, uh, much like the old dogma for the joint, is um, a sterile space where infection is a result of maybe a single invasive pathogen. Uh, in UTI, it's often E. coli into that space. Um, however, emerging evidence is really showing that uh, the bladder is a living dynamic system of uh, a changing microbiome. and um, Infection, rather than just being you know, very simplistic, um, you know, single organism invading that space, um, it's really uh, showing that it's uh, you know a disruption in that microbiome, and um, you know it's a much more complicated process. Um, and what what we've been seeing is that uh, culture is really insufficient in identifying that uh, that changing microbiome, um, and there's. You know, multiple uh, multiple papers and a lot of literature that's showing this. This is just one example um, of a study out of the United Kingdom um, looking at uh, midstream urine cultures in patients with uh, UTI, and um, yeah, culture really failed to fails to identify a lot of the uh, infections and a lot of the pathogens in these cases, whereas uh, genomic analysis um, does a lot better at, at identifying them. And then this is uh, one of the more recent head-to-head um, -head randomized uh, studies looking at treatment based on culture versus treatment based on NGS. And um, Karan will we'll get into it a little bit later. Where um, you know this is one of the more one of the things that we're looking to replicate in in orthopedics as well um, with the study comparing outcomes um, for culture. You know, Basing treatment on culture versus NGS, um, but yeah, this this was one in in urology with 44 patients with UTI sim symptoms. Um, culture was positive only in 13 of those cases, whereas there was positive NGS in all 44. Um, and most importantly, the outcomes were were much better, um, as you can see in this figure. Uh, the Symptom scores for for patients treated based on NGS was um, much higher at two weeks compared to those with culture. Yeah, so then um, this one is is one that Alessina briefly mentioned. Um, this was a case report in New England Journal of Medicine looking at um, uh, meningoencephalitis, uh, many cases of which go undiagnosed. And it's a particular problem um, with the number of uh, the high number of infectious agents that can cause this disease. Um, so this case report was about a 14-year-old boy um, who had fever and headache for four months. Multiple workups were were negative um, for identifying any pathogen, um, but NGS uh, showed showed uh, leptospira. And this patient was successfully treated um, and then later on confirmed by the C CDC through uh, PCR and serologic testing to be the, the accurate diagnosis. Um, and then along those lines, a slightly larger a larger trial, um, a one-year multicenter prospective study looking at NGS of the uh, cerebrospinal fluid for infectious meningitis. Um, Again, showed that NGS was able to identify um, many of the the infections that were um, not identified through clinical testing through culture, um, and they they identified that treatment based on this information um, had a clinical benefit for for many of these patients. Um, 
And then an another field is uh, cardiology, where infectious uh, endocarditis um, is another major problem, one where uh, early and optimized antibiotic treatment is, is very important. And then, um, again, similar to, to PJI and, and to other areas of orthopedics, um, culture-negative infection is, is a big problem. Um, so a couple uh, fairly recent studies uh, involving endocarditis. Uh, one is a case report showing um, that NGS was able to identify an infectious organism. And then another uh, larger study of uh, 44 patients, um, which as you can see showed very high sensitivity of NGS compared to, uh, compared to culture um, of, of many of the different uh, samples. Okay, and then lastly, um, looking at wound care. Um, this is just a consensus guidelines uh, in, in wound care showing that, um, again, uh, identifi identification of microorganisms uh, through uh, genomic testing uh, in days one to four is very important. And um, a study from about 10 years ago of uh, almost 1,400 patients um, looking at treatment based on culture um, versus treatment based on uh, molecular diagnostics, either with uh, systemic diagnostics or um, guided topical antibiotics. Um, and similar to that head-to-head -head study with urology showed that uh, treatment based on NGS um, really had a beneficial effect um, in, in both groups treated based on uh, NGS compared to that of culture. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. We're going to have Karan come back and talk about ongoing studies 